all. My name is Dr. Kamal Kumar. I head the Medical Affairs Department of Ajanta. On behalf of Ajanta Parma Limited, I welcome all of the experts and the delegates for Cardio Master Workshop Edition 2. This is the sixth session today. And uh, before starting the meeting, uh, I would like to inform all uh, the Dr. Ajay Mahajan has his birthday today. So on behalf of uh, uh, Ajanta and on behalf of all of the uh, attendees here, uh, we wish a very warm uh, birthday, happy birthday uh, to Ajay Mahajan, sir. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, sir. Happy birthday. And happy, ho happy holy to each and every one of you. Happy holy, ma'am. Thank you. Ma Same to you, ma'am. Thank you. So uh, for today's agenda, uh, today's uh, main agenda is interesting cases of congenital angiogram. The uh, presentation will be taken by Dr. Nageshwar Rao Ponetti. Moderator uh, for the meetings are Professor Ajay Mahajan and Professor Milin Farke. Our expert panelists today are uh, Professor Dr. Anita Saxena, Dr. I.B. Vijaya Lakshmi, and Dr. Jaya Ranganathan. And uh, postgraduate student uh, in today's meeting is Dr. Sriram from LTMC Mumbai, Dr. Abhi Khaldar from SCBMC Katak, Dr. Umesh Tripathi from SGPGI Lucknow, Dr. Sandeep Sharma from SMS Jaipur, and Dr. Pratik Chopra, LTMC Cyan. So uh, Dr. Ajay Mahajan is a professor and head department of cardiology, GS Medical College and KEM Hospital, Mumbai. And Dr. Milind Farke uh, is additional professor at department of cardiology, <laughs> LTM Medical College and LTMG Hospital, Sire. Uh, our speaker for today's evening, Dr. Nageshwar Rao Ponetti is pediatric cardiologist at Hyderabad. Professor Dr. Anita Saxena is a vice chancellor at Pandit BDS uh, UHS Rota. And Dr. I.B. Vijayalakshmi is Senior Pediatric uh, Cardiologist at Bangalore. Dr. Jay Rangnathan is a Senior Consultant Cardiologist, Bangalore. With this, without taking much time, I would request uh, our moderator, uh, Professor Milin Farke, to kindly kickstart the meeting. Dr. Farke, sir, over to you, please. Thank you, Dr. Kamal. Thank you very much. And once again, a warm welcome to everybody, the panelists as well as the students and the audience. And again, a big thank you to Agenda Pharma for making all this program possible. Now we are on our sixth session of interesting spotters and uh, uh, it's been a very, very richly uh, uh, illuminating and learning experience for all of us so far. And again, today we have the who's who of pediatric cardiology here. Dr. Nageshwar Rao, sir, who's gonna be the chief presenter, Dr. Anita Saxena, madam, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi, madam, all of them were on the previous ECHOS program also, and that was one of the best programs of the whole uh, session. And today we also are privileged to have Dr. Jairanganath, sir. And uh, this is a topic which many uh, students find a little difficult because as it is not too many people do congenital angiograms, the indications for doing catheterization in congenital heart disease has now gone down, especially with the advent of good echocardiography and modern imaging modalities. But still, there is a lot of scope for traditional cardiac catheterization, both in terms of understanding hemodynamics and the anatomy and correlating with your echo findings and formulating a treatment plan. So I think we will all be very, very rewarded, very much rewarded with uh, Dr. Nageshwar Rao's presentation and all the comments from the esteemed faculty. So without much ado, shall I please hand over to sir, who can then start. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate Ajanta Pharma to take this uh, educational program very much forward. And I believe this is the sixth one. And uh, last meeting was uh, uh, extremely grateful uh, by Dr. Anita Saxena, shown variety of uh, echocardiograms and all. As you rightly said that the conventional diagnostic angiogram is becoming more and more less uh, with the new modality of investigations like a CT angio, MRI, and echocardiogram, transthoracic as well as transesophageal and 3D. However, still there is a role, especially in case of assessing the uh, vascular resistance, pre-fontan evaluation, and also Sometimes we still do angiogram after the uh, CT scan. I will, what I will do is, I will quickly go through the basic principles for three, four minutes. Then I will show you the illustrative cases. 
those illustrative cases i request uh, our panelists and moderator to take over that rather than me because i am already biased so uh, so that uh, students can participate and at the end of some 18 cases we have case studies completely those also we if time permits we can do essentially i would like to know from the students you know all these uh, people so in history of uh, cardiac catheterization you cannot forget them frostman kurnard and dickinson richards all these three people three people got the nobel prize for the cardiac catheterization this is a very very interesting moment in the history of cardiac catheterization after invention of the prongyonogram if you look at the heart in the chest coronal plane you can see the topography of the heart how you have to see the total heart from various angles and then you should reconstruct it brain it is possible with the newer modalities of a vrt ct angiogram and mri but it is not possible with the conventional angiogram at all you have to only see the segments of the heart from different different views either you have to choose one of the orthogonal view frontal lateral rao lao or based on the structure what you want to see which part of the heart you want to see you have to decide viewing the heart is you are reconstructing in your brain so you can think from ct scan or mri like you have sagittal section coronal section and you can have a axial section you are going to reconstruct that in your mind and then come to understanding whereas in angiogram you are going to see the heart a particular structure either four chamber or crux of the heart or you are going to profile only the intraventricular septum or if you go cranially outflow tracts that we have to see whether cranial or caudal projection is going to be useful two orthogonal projections are useful if you are working on a biplane model biplane mode of cath lab uh, at this point of time there are very few centers they have biplane uh, in private sector we don't have biplane so we are actually doing in a single plane and more radiation will be there even biplane also will have radiation but uh, you will get definitely uh, better understanding of the anatomy when you use a biplane so if you take in sight as solitus if you want to see the crux of the heart you are going to project rao but it is going to be uh, in sight as solitus you are going to see the rao but when you uh, completely go uh, uh, 180 degrees to that you will see the sight as inverses where you will see the four chamber heart similarly in cranial and caudal angulation you will have totally different picture when you work on the orthogonal plane i was told i never saw that when the first cardiac catheterization lab was introduced people used to rotate the children with various angulations to get the lao rao lateral cranial caudal now with the present available most sophisticated cams you can actually project lateral and caudal cranial rotational and even lateral views to when you are doing axillary approach or carotid approach or peripheral it is going to be useful this is the most one of the most complex uh, projection where in case of a detransposition of great vessels if you really want to profile the coronary artery anatomy you have to go to steep caudal view here caudal that is sometimes call it as sitting uh, back view and uh, you can see the coronary arteries in that because iota is a quite anterior structure and it gives a coronary arteries nowadays we don't do this kind of injections anymore because echocardiogram itself will show the various kind of anatomy 
second most important aspect when you are doing angiogram you should understand about the angiomate how much of volume flow and pressure you should give you have to have thorough knowledge about that i am not going to discuss all that what are the catheters you are going to use angiocardiographic catheters like a pigtail catheter berman catheter nih catheter all these angiographic catheters you should have understanding where you are going to use the catheters profiling of the various structures are essential to understand that where is the interventricular septum where is the defect is it a membranous defect or is it a posterior muscular mid muscular or anterior muscular then you can actually work on the angiogram so for an example if you look at the ventricular septal defect a clock in the short axis by echocardiogram you will see the i, I will just show you that yeah if you have if you have ventricular septal defect here that is going to be inlet or sometimes a post muscular perimembranous vst outlet muscular and then totally doubly committed vst you will see that so based on that you need to actually take a view and then profile the ventricular septal defect we are going to discuss all those aspects so whether rao is going to profile the anterior muscular outlet vst frontal plane in case of congenital corrected transposition of great vessel where the the ventricular septum is in the straight and midline whereas lao to profile the mid or apical or perimembranous ventricular septal defect whereas left lateral you can uh, really see the outlet vst sometimes intramuscular vst so cranial tilt will definitely profile the much more details about the ventricular septal defect and its uh, a definition when you are uh, seeing the frontal plane you are going to see the spine in the midline if the spine goes more than half of the cardiac is seal hauti then it is called as shallow lao whereas if it is going more than two thirds of the spine cardiac is seal hauti it is called as a steep lao whereas if the spine is outside the cardiac border you can call it as a lateral way similarly diaphragm you can talk about cranial and caudal so a perimembranous ventricular septal defect you can actually profile in the long axis view a long axis view called as lao 60 to 70 and cranial 20 to 30 degrees whereas you want to see the a inlet vst or av canal defect vst you do the four chamber view or hepatoclavicular view that is lao 45 and steep cranial tilt going up to 35 to 35 so you will see the hepatoclavicular view whereas inlet inlet vst can be better profiled whereas mid muscular vst again long axis view and uh, uh, anterior muscular vst based on the which how much of degree of anterior is it to, towards the marginal then you can go to the uh, steep lao or lateral view subpulmonic or outflow vsts either you can profile from the lateral view or ra view these are the fundamental principles which you all should know here you can see a residual perimembranous vst is being profiled in the lao cranial view here very nicely whereas a uh, anterior muscular vst is you can see anterior muscular vst this is the pulmonary artery here pulmonary valve and also there is additional muscular vst is better propelled in a situs uh, uh, inverse total situation a right lateral position you can see here which is seen very nicely so this is one of the case we did during workshop is subpulmonic vst being closed by the uh, leak oil below the aortic wall uh, we don't practice this but 
uh, one of my friend called Dr. Tin came and performed this procedure uh, in a lateral view. You can see left lateral view being projected that. So, whereas a mid to anterior muscular VST is again, you can see in the RAO view here, you can see in RAO view, you can see the anterior muscular, even subpulmonic, you can see in RAO view. This again, some of the apical muscular VSTs, mid muscular VSTs are being propelled in the ST level, shallow level. So, the terminology which we all should know what is it sitting up view, uh, what is the long axis view, what is the hepatoclavicular view uh, or four chamber view, you all should have idea when we are talking about that. So, here I would like our uh, uh, panelists or chairpersons to take this and then probably you can uh, delegate to one of the students and moderate. At the end of each piece, probably I may give a small comment. Uh, Dr. Nageshwar Ra, that was an excellent uh, introduction to the uh, or today's discussion. Uh, one more thing I would like to add is uh, the Garbode defect, which is extremely rare, but however it is there, the student should know about that also. So in that, you know, instead of the regular LAO or the other views, uh, the common view is the a AP view uh, with the RA tilting. And there, you know, the defect from LV to the RA can be very nicely visualized. And that's the only thing to be added. Okay. Okay. And the NIT occlude was used for the PDA. And we uh, stopped, I mean, we were the first one to do in 2004. Lee himself had come. And of course, uh, it is very good for the mid-muscular and you have done perimembranous, that's also nice. So any students would like to take? Yeah. Uh, uh, may I try, ma'am? Yes, sir. Uh, so this is uh, on the left side, uh, this is a venous angiogram being done by the femoral uh, vein. Uh, to the uh, the catheter is most probably multi-purpose, and uh, there is an injection into the S SVC. And uh, uh, on the uh, on the right hand side uh, is uh, uh, the multi-purpose catheter via the femoral uh, vein to the uh, uh, femoral vein uh, via uh, IVC, and uh, the it's it's probably LSVC draining into coronary sinus. Okay. Very good, wonderful. So, what about uh, right side? Is there innominate vein is seen? Right side, this one, your left hand side. Is there break breaker cephalic trunk? The catheter did not go there, but always you will see the negative reflex or some amount of contrast will go to the breaker cephalic, which is not seen. So this is only a right-sided SVC is draining to the atria. So you presume that there should be some left left-sided SVC. So here, what you are seeing is the absolutely correct left SVC draining to the coronary sinus to the atria. That's a wonderful, very interesting. So what about this? So what? What is this called? So H sign, sir. H sign uh, in present in bilateral uh, SVC. There is a communicating vein between both the SVC, sir. Very good, wonderful. Why should we do this angiograms? Is it necessary? Why should we know the knowledge of the RSVC, LSVC? So for course, the surgeons, uh, so uh, uh, surgeons, what? No, we don't do this uh, nowadays. Almost nothing. So you should know the uh, application of this. Well, yeah, you're right. The surgeon should have some idea about it. In what? In where? In which which, how do they cannulate? Which situation is it important? Is there any specific situation in which you should know ki a bilateral vena cava is draining the upper part of the body? Some procedure involving the vena cava, surgical procedure. Sir, like so. Uh, Surgeons do cannulation, no? What is cannulation? And why do they do it? So, 
during the cable pulmonary bypass Um, no that is okay that is fine madam is asking that cannulation is important when the svc they cannulate they should have the idea if they cannulate only one svc other svc will be doing once again isn't it that is one part of it the surgeon should know that they should have two uh, svc or one svc other madam anita madam is asking is there any surgical issue there where uh, madam is asking is she is giving a clue in which surgical procedure where they need to connect both the svc to the like in uh, when we do uh, glenshunt uh, yes, we full. okay so that yes. is is the most important yes. uh, so we should have the uh, anatomical knowledge of the svc in in general in everything but more so with that particular uh, surgical subsets okay yeah so i'll go to the second so probably anita ma'am jay and vijayalash ma'am can allot the students only umesh is there any other uh, peaches are there here yeah, dr pratik is there pratik dr ishwaran are also there madam dr pratik can you try yes sir you can take left left first and then the right one at first we decide whether the same patient or different patients easy to diagnose that you can so, see the suture lines no they they're are different, different. okay yes. left is different right is different okay so that means Common we are sense. not we are not trying to have the same uh, problem both the right. things so you tell us the first one the left one where is the, where, the, where is the catheter and what is the catheter and where is the injection make it a habit to properly start reading methodically You should so ideally start. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You should ideally start with the view, right? Yes. Because if you know the view, then you would know what structures are seen in particular view in what way. So the best is to first see the view. Look for any foreign body, like you have sutures over here. Then look at the catheter position. After that, follow the dye. So you can start with the. With the so, view, so AP uh, view. Where is the catheter between the? Uh... From where is the catheter coming? Is it from so, IVC or SVC? It's coming from the SVC. Okay. The uh, after the injury, so looks like there is a shunt with the cyst. Uh, uh, so it so must be a jugular range. puncture. Jugular yes. puncture. Ha, can be patient be may have undergone a BDG shunt. Which shunt? That, uh, no, BT shunt, BT shunt or Glen? No. He said BDG, BDG, BDG shunt. He, he said BDG. What is BDG? Okay. okay, okay. What is BDG? Okay. Bad direction of Glen. Okay, fine. Good. So, so what, what is, is bidirectional? What is bidirectional? Sir, when you, here you uh, connect the SVC from one of the Uh, one of the pulmonary branches of pulmonary uh, connection given to the hello we can yeah. hear you yeah, we can hear you pratik go ahead so where you connect the uh, 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 svc to one of the branches of the pulmonary artery whichever is the pratik dr nageshwar rao sir is asking you why is it called a bidirectional lenshunt what is bidirectional about it by directional so if you have only one superior vena cava is connected to the pulmonary artery it will shunt to both sides of the pulmonary artery the classic glen means end of superior vena cava is connected to the end of the right pulmonary artery that is called as a classic glen that means right pulmonary artery will get direct blood from the svc end to end anastomosis that is to be classic glen whereas this is The end of the SVC is connected to the side of the pulmonary artery. The flow will go to the right PA as well as the left PA. Here you can see. Can you see my arrow? This is the another SVC which is connected called bilateral bidirectional glen. It is actually by the bi bilateral bidirectional glen. You are seeing the reflex into 
a left superior vena cava here beautiful so, very nice after, after that you can see the pulmonary venous drainage and then going to the aorta good very nice can you see that and then there is a negative effect because the left svc is draining in through the left pulmonary artery see both reflux as well as negative shadow is there I think okay. one more thing that you should talk about whenever a Glen angio is being shown to you is about presence or absence of pulmonary AV fistula, because that is a, a known association after a Glen. And here, actually, if you see very carefully, there are a couple of end-on black shadows that you see in the hyla, which could be indicative of uh, very, very you know small capillary level yeah. pulmonary AV fistula. Something uh, that you be. need to talk absolutely. about. Absolutely, absolutely. That one. Yeah. Yeah. So the capillary phase will be lost. This For the students, uh, in such cases, we generally don't give dead AP views, but we give a little bit of cranial angulation. So that opens up the pulmonary bifurcation well. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. So please uh, go ahead with this angle. Somebody else can take it. Dr. Sriram? So if no you one is... Muted. Sriram, you are muted. No. Yeah, we can hear you, Sriram. Go ahead. Uh, not making an attempt. It is an AP view. It's a post-operating angiogram. Then... Very good. Uh, then... Um, this is a AP First, you identify the catheter and it is through what? Is it from the arterial or the no. venous? Is it from the iota or the IVC? So you can see the catheter in AP projection, the vessel which is you can see left of the spine, which is going superiorly and then coming back and draining into the pulmonary artery. So you cannot have a descending aorta to pulmonary connection and filling both the pulmonary arteries like this. So what else is it? What, what else is it? So this Dr. Shriram, are you connected because we have not heard you at all? My my audio. Uh, audible. Am I audible? We are able to hear you, but not the postgraduate. Uh -huh. They are selectively doing that because they don't want to answer. Hello. <laughs> so selective deafness. <laughs> so you can see the. The inferior vena cava interruption, what will happen if it is going on the left side here, that is a hemi no. connection, communication, which is connected to the pulmonary artery. So this is called as Kawashima operation. In case of univentricular heart, whatever the anatomical context like a heterotaxis syndrome, usually it is seen in case of left isomerism. In left isomerism, IVC interruption is seen because both the atria are the left atrium. The inferior vena cava is confused to drain into the atria. That's where there will be IVC interruption. In case of right isomerism, pulmonary veins are confused to enter into the both right atrium. They will have TAPVR. That is called as right isomerism. So if this is a classical left isomerism where the inferior vena cava is connected to the uh, is draining through the hemi ajagas vein to SVC. SVC is connected to the pulmonary artery. So here uh, it is called as Kawashima operation. Hepatic veins and coronary sinus is excluded at this point of time. In future, they have to again root that hepatic vein to the pulmonary circulation. Otherwise, they will have pulmonary AVMs as Anita Mem was telling and also significant desaturation. Excellent. No. Now, I would like to ask Pratik, how do you uh, differentiate whether it is a descending iota with the duct uh, filling the pulmonary artery from the hemiazygous filling the pulmonary artery? Pratik? 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, is it, How do you uh, distinguish? Ma'am, it's not the pulsatility. Where is the catheter kept now? Where is the catheter end? Catheter is somewhere in the middle, uh, middle. abdominal, below the diaphragm, abdominal aorta. Okay. So yes, the supply is going below above. Yeah, so if you give the injection in the aerotogram at the renal level or at the celiac trunk level, what will happen to the contrast? Contrast comes down, isn't it? It should never go up. Yes. yes. Okay, even if you give a pressure injection, it doesn't go up. Here, what is happening? Everything is an anti-grade, isn't it? Yes. Going up. Yes, yes. So it has to be a venous channel. Right? So uh, that's a great. So you can see the venous anatomy of the body. SVC receives from the right innominate jugular, left innominate and left jugular and there will be always a communication between the inferior vena cava to the superior vena cava either through ajagas or hemi ajagas connection before birth. There will be some competition flow and flows will not be established after birth and if there is obstruction either in the superior vena cava or in the inferior vena cava, then these venous channels will be opened. Then there will be venovenous collaterals or either hemiagogas or agiagogas based on the, that particular situation, it will be opened. If you look at the embryology of the venous anatomy, you have anterior common cardinal vein, anterior and posterior cardinal vein on the right side will form the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava and part of the coronary sinus whereas the left side, it will be involuted between four to seven weeks of a gestational age. If it there will be communication between the right anterior cardinal to the left anterior cardinal here. If you have a persistent of the left anterior cardinal vein, then it is called as a left SVC. So that is what the bilateral superior vena cava H or without H will be formed. So, as we saw that in this particular case, we have a hemi ajagas vein connection, which is to the superior vena cava, and then which was cut and then diverted the pulmonary artery called as Kawashima operation. So, we'll move on to the next. Somebody can take it. Ma'am, one Ma 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 easy one. Very easy one. Again, now I, think, I uh, we, we should see. Uh, uh, Ma'am, may I try? May I try? Yeah, please. Please, please take one at a time. Uh, the left side uh, shows uh, it is a AP view where there is a multi-purpose catheter which is passing from the femoral vein through the IVC into the right atrium into the right ventricle and through that into the pulmonary artery. And there is a selective injection into the left pulmonary artery. We one basic, one is... basic question to you, with the, will the multipurpose be used for injecting the dye or an NIH is used? Is this a basic question? Uh, Ma'am, NIH will be used. Okay, because you use the word multipurpose. See, multipurpose, you can give a hand injection, but not a pressure injection, okay? Actually, this is a Burman angio catheter. We did not inflate the balloon. If you inflate the balloon, it will go and suck at the somewhere in the pulmonary artery. So actually, this is a Burman brand, very old angiogram, Burman angio. Please go ahead. Then we can see that it is inject selectively injected into the left pulmonary artery. We can see that the left-sided pulmonary veins are connected through a uh, anomalous vein that is connected to the left-sided uh, innominate vein, and then there is a communicating vein which is draining into the uh, left-sided uh, to the into the right-sided SVC. So this is based on this, we can say that it it can even be a, a partial or a total anomalous pulmonary venous connection. Okay. Which okay. type? Supracardiac or intracardiac? Supracardiac. Supracardiac. Okay. So it what, may what is the vertical vein? Sorry, ma'am. Vertical vein. How does it pass? Uh, Through what? What's between which vertical, structures does it pass? It passes between the pulmonary artery in the front and the left bronchus. Left pulmonary vein. artery and the left bronchus. Left pulmonary artery and the left bronchus. Okay. So this is a left pulmonary veins are draining, forming the vertical vein and draining the innominate 
that's why you have svc enamelate vessels are both are enlarged here so this is a partial anomalous pulmonary venous return referred as a case of atrial septal defect i think so, it is important for you to also say that there is no dilution happening in the vertical vein if it was a total anomalous pulmonary venous connection then you would have seen that the flow into the vertical vein is getting diluted with blood correct so also oh, the vertical vein is not very dilated it rather absolutely small. absolutely so it is unlikely to be papvc uh the right one can i try the right one yes, yes. please please go ahead uh again over here we see that there is a nis catheter which is passed through the no, 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 no. vein into the sorry wait 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 this is got all the features of a some particular entity yeah. please tell me each and everything right from the beginning is a wonderful uh, it's look, a classic look at, look at the look at the channels where are they going no first start from the, this one the catheter is passing no no don't it have the catheter this is an ap view this is an ap view isn't so it first heart cardiac is still healthy that's what the professor jayaranganath is asking first what is the CD. cardiac is still healthy this is ap view where is the heart where is the spine where is the heart heart is to the left or to the right or the midline heart is at the midline isn't it like this a mesocardia right. it's exactly in the middle mesocardia yeah, is a mesocardia right okay see the uh, yes. uh, then then you proceed now uh, there is selective cannulation of the right pulmonary artery and uh, there is injection into it there we can see that there is there is a drainage of that scimitar vein from the right sided pulmonary veins which is going and draining into the inferior vena cava and from there it is entering again into the ra so this is the semit this is typical of that semitar syndrome where there is uh, anomalous there is lung sequestration then there can be anomalous uh, connections to the pulmonary uh, pulmonary artery from the descending thoracic aorta then there can be uh, no, no, no. there is hypoplasia sri ram you described very well pulmonary artery cannot be descending aorta what are the most three important components of the semitar syndrome right uh, right lung hypoplasia very good uh, sequestration of sequestration of the lung same same sequestration hypoplasia same then uh, then the there is some amount of stenosis at the Uh, no, no, no. Anomalous pulmonary venous return. Anomalous pulmonary venous return and uh, and abnormal the, arterial supply from the abdominal aorta to the sequestration lung. These three components we usually will be there. It's a syndromic complex. Yes. Sequestrated hypoplastic lung, pathological lung, anomalous pulmonary venous return and abnormal. abnormal arterial supply supply from supply from the okay abnormal you can continue continue same now what anita ma'am was asked now shri ram can you see what dr anita ma'am was telling look at here how the yes ma'am there is dilution is so dilated and then innominate also dilated compared to the previous one okay yes ma'am the again is over here also is it a burman catheter which is used there there is a small halo around the tip of the catheter correct of course of course it's a balloon there uh this is a the left sided is a there is a the catheter is passed through the ivc into the pulmonary artery main pulmonary artery and there is a selective injection into that where we can see the dilated vertical vein and the communicating vein which is draining into the right sided svc and we can also see that typical snowman appearance of the heart because of that wonderful the upper part of the snowman wonderful wonderful sorry sir it's a very good wonderful you are right you are right shri ram he is giving you a compliment smile okay. thank you what do you use to inflate the balloon question is uh, what do you use to inflate the balloon the burman catheter balloon so, 
sir i am not aware normal cell line mm-hmm. so i think so this is generation, generation this generation has not seen a burman catheter <laughs> that is why they are saying you know you cannot produce that kind of uh, halo you know with a cell line so anybody else who knows what it's is it is it a room air or something yeah. else oxygen it's there in the name which is the gas which is most dissolvable rapidly dissolvable is it oxygen or carbon dioxide which is the one which is dissolves very rapidly carbon dioxide carbon dioxide okay okay very good so what is the other side so i will tell you this this is a post operative patient you can see the clips and the, you have a burman catheter in the left pulmonary artery a left jugular vein axis is taken and then a device is being placed in the vertical vein so that means this patient underwent surgery and also you can see little bit of contrast is going and filling the left atrium so that means this patient underwent surgery for the tapbr but that particular time surgeon for some reason did not ligate the vertical vein which is persistent and behaving like a pre tricuspid shunt so now it is being closed using a vascular plug here so i will not ask questions on that i will so in the pulmonary veins which are posteriorly placed so that's why echocardiographically sometimes it's a challenging in the presence of respiratory tract infection or pulmonary artery hypertension so all pulmonary veins they form the left atrium posterior wall and it appears like a crab you can see it's a crab we have seen crab so this is absolutely looking like a crab and it's not easy to profile always by the echocardiogram all veins in one plane that's why angiograms are mandatory in case of doubtful cases either ct or uh, the conventional angiogram so in case of tapvr what will happen all pulmonary veins form the common pulmonary vein which actually drains into the superior vena cava in wherever the anatomically it is embryologically it is connected and there will be admixture in the right atrium so you have admixture blood going into the right right atrium right left atrium right ventricle left ventricle pulmonary artery and aorta so you have a typical equalization of saturations in case of supracardiac tap here you can see the the sequestered lobe anomalous pulmonary venous drainage to the inferior vena cava in case of schemata so we'll move on to the next so the left side one is very simple left side one is very simple what is the left side one catheter course mesh right catheter course it's a pictal catheter first you start the course from where is it coming is it to the right or the left of the whatever you call it sir it ma'am it is to the right side the aortic arch ma'am it's a right sided aortic arch and the okay. catheter is coming on the right side of the uh, vertebral column this is a pictal okay. catheter okay and uh, this is an uh, arch aortogram being done it's in the ascending aorta no yeah. the pictal is in the ascending aorta okay okay then so very good then what okay. is the branching pattern so he is he is freeze yeah. nageshwara is freeze yeah. yeah. abrant abrant to uh, right subclavian artery where is the abrant right subclavian artery what is the branching pattern normal branching pattern and in right aortic arch what is the first branch of the right aortic arch usually in the absence of any aberrancy no what is the normal left aortic arch branching pattern can you please tell so we have right vicocephalic trunk very good uh, common uh, then uh, the subclavian artery and the uh, uh, right common carotid left common carotid no, and no, left no, no, no. 
No, normal left aortic arch. First, where the leaves break a cephalic trunk on the right side. Second vessel is left carotid artery. Third vessel is left subclavian artery. Whereas break a cephalic trunk divides into right carotid and right subclavian. Okay. Here, what is happening in this? It is a right aortic arch. And what is the first vessel? What should be the first vessel in a right aortic arch? Mirror image right aortic arch. See the first vessel. It's opposite. No, it's just opposite of what happens in the left aortic. Sir, it's a totally mirror image. Left, left brachiocephalic trunk. Then there is a right common carotid, and there is a right subclavian. Wonderful. That's it. So right aortic arch is seen in case of complex congenital heart diseases. Commonly, tetralogy of halo, okay, and other you know pulmonary atresias, three percent of tricuspid atresias, DORV, DTJ one percent. Truncus is quite common. Truncus are in case of increased pulmonary blood flow, truncus arterial CC is associated with thirty-three percent, thirty percent. Whereas in case of situs inversus totalis. Right aortic arch with the mirror image branching is normal, whereas the right aortic arch with no structural heart disease will not have a mirror image branching. It's an extremely rare. Usually they will have upper end subclavian artery. First branch will be right left carotid, right carotid, right subclavian. Then left subclavian will come from the descending aorta will form the vascular ring. So here, a mirror image branching in a dextrocard in a levocardial situation means it may be some congenital heart disease like a tetralogy of Fallot. Okay, what is this here? Other side. So, uh, so this is again a pectal catheter uh, retrogradely placed into the aorta, showing uh, coagulation. Very good. And, and there is a and a, there is an aberrant left uh, there is an aberrant uh, subclavian artery which arises near near the coagulation coagulated segments. Aberrant which is a subclavian artery? Right, right or left? Right one. Very good. So now you want to do some procedure. For an example, you want to put a covered stent. Can you do covered stent? No, sir. It will uh, jail the subclavian. Uh, from sir jayrangnath can uh, take over and then he can tell this now what do you want to do ideally for example if you come across a child with this some kind of a thing is a coagulation umesh what will be the blood pressure on the right and the left upper limb is this subclavian coming beyond the coagulation or before that and before Look that carefully it, it... So look carefully. From where is it coming? Coming from um, near the coagulated segment. So it's it's yeah. coming beyond it. No, no, it's coming beyond it now. Okay. E even if it is from the coagulated, then your right blood pressure will be right. lesser than lesser the than the right. lesser than the left side. Left one. Left one. Okay. So the right upper limb blood pressure will be lesser than the left, and that gives a clue to you. Okay, that there may be as uh, aberrant left subclavian arising at the coagulated segment. So you all should have understanding about the anatomy of the ascending aorta, transverse arch, descending aorta, isthmus, the branches. All those things are very important. Okay, now next person. Mm, beautiful. Dear ma'am, we yeah. are. Very lovely, Anjo. So may I try? Absolutely. Go ahead. Nobody will stop you. So this is an uh, this is a retrogradely placed aortic uh, catheter uh, placed uh, in the uh, ascending aorta, pectal catheter, and uh, a, a aortogram done, which shows which view. So, uh, sir, AP view is slight cranial angulation. Only AP slightly. How do you know? 
don't tell that you, if you don't know don't tell slightly word is not there first of all <laughs> <laughs> so there is a, a communic- there is a communication between the uh, aorta and the uh, pulmonary artery because uh, there is a simultaneous opacification of uh, the pulmonary artery bifurcation so, so when do you get that this is pulm- uh, it's a pulmonary artery bifurcation oh sorry uh, this is a uh, AV no, pulmonary artery yeah. arising from what? AV fistula. Okay. No, no, so it's an uh, aorto pulmonary window. AP window or something else. Okay, okay. Give a DD differential diagnosis. One is AP window. Truncus. Yeah, correct. I am going to ask you very what type of truncus? It's a hemi truncus, ma'am, because uh, the left. Sir, no, no, no. One, one minute, two minutes. Somebody should uh, stop their microphone. See, Umesh, how do you differentiate between AP window and truncus in AP view? What is your differential point? How do you differentiate? So, I will tell you the answer. In case of truncus, a single semilunar wall will be there. In case of AP window, you will have two semilunar walls. Here only one single semilunar wall. If in, in case of AP window, you will fill the contrast to the MPA and you can it can opacify the other semilunar wall. Pulmonary valve. So, so here we are not able to see the pulmonary valve, no? So can you classify the truncus? Class uh, one, class two, class three, class four. Children, you need is to that, uh, that, uh, the Okay, Maybe. if Umesh can't answer, then uh, Pratik can take. So, what is this case? What is this? Another? This this particular, I, I will probably request one, one uh, panelist to coordinate one case. That will be better. What is this case? Can you please tell, read this? It is in AP view. Pictorial catheter is coming from. Hello. Hey. Yeah, pictorial catheter is coming from the right descending aorta, right aortic arch, and into the ascending aorta. Why I said ascending aorta? You can see the corner artery. Okay. You can see the corner artery. So here ascending aorta is giving right pulmonary artery. This is called as right hemitruncus. Now you tell me what is this? Same thing, no? Why do, what is the confusion? Can you please tell? Sir, it is uh, right? Left pulmonary artery is coming from the ascending aorta. So, this is left hemitruncus. Left hemitruncus. I think one particular person's microphone is causing echoing. Probably they should stop. So, this is a right left hemitruncus. Is it the truncus here? Or what is this? Now the angio which is running. This is again AP view. Right aortic arch. Disconnected left pulmonary artery. In tetralogy of fellow, if there is right aortic arch, close to 10% will have absent left pulmonary artery syndrome. So here an indirect duct is giving Indirect duct PDA is giving the left pulmonary artery which is being stented. It is not the truncus arteriosis or hemitruncus. Sriram, so, what is that condition called as? Tetralogy of fallow with the absent left pulmonary artery. What is it called as? It's called as the Debuch syndrome. Debuch syndrome. Okay. Somebody's microphone is disturbing. So you can see the truncus. I call it Edwards classification here, type 1, 
2, 3 and pseudo that is pulmonary atresia, PST or one para classification equivalent of A1, A2 is equal to that, A3 is a hemitruncus or one pulmonary artery is coming or with the interruption. You all can read that. Maybe uh, this uh, ma'am, uh, Anita ma'am can uh, coordinate this, I think. Okay, okay. That is better, ma'am. We only have one candidate, I think. Giri. <laughs> you are the only one who has to answer. answer all the questions. Please go ahead. This is a pickle catheter. Uh, the right side uh, and uh, injecting the ascending aorta and showing uh, there is a communication. Uh, there is a uh, Yeah, yeah, you are right. There is a commission ascending aorta which is connecting to the uh, what is correct. filling? What is filling by this communication? Is it an artery? Is it a cardiac chamber? What is it? Communication between can you, Dr. Nageshwar, can you just show the initial two or three frames for him? Just go back. Yeah. As soon as they're sending you, Yeah, just wait here. Yes, yes. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Now, can you, Pratik, can you identify what is happening? You are right. No, there is a communication is from aorta somewhere. Aorta. Where is it? Where is the die going? It's the main uh, in the MPA. Okay. Yes. Yes. Like a, uh, there is auto pulmonary window is a possibility. Very good. That's what it is. You know, is it proximal AP window or distal AP window? Proximal. See again, if you had looked at the X-ray chest, you know, like the silhouette, then you would have seen that this is pulmonary artery position, dilated pulmonary artery, and that is what is filling. You are filling RP also. LPA is overlap because this is a plain AP view without a cranial tilt. So your LP and MP are overlapped, like they do in a plain X-ray chest. So there is an MP and the, behind the MP, there is an LP going. You can see the LP branches filling. So this is AP window with distal AP window. This cannot be truncus arteriosus because you can see the negative shadow here. Yes. There's a valve. There's a valve, pulmonary valve. This is the pulmonary valve. In fact, in, in this, I think they should not be in a distal AP window. Usually there is no confusion because yeah. you have an aortic valve also, which is very normal looking. It's the proximal AP window where there is confusion between truncus and AP window. Okay. And Pratik, if you want to do the device closure, what are the things that you look for? The structures very carefully. So which are the structures proximity. you are asking which the device can encroach upon? So you have to be careful. Proximity, proximity from the aortic uh, wall, the coronaries, and coronaries, uh, absolutely. Yeah. We have to look for the coronaries, how far it is from the defect. Okay. Otherwise, the retention skirt can encroach upon the coronaries. You have to be careful about the coronaries. Okay, that's a beautiful picture. The next one, right? Who wants to take this one? Uh, I don't know what happened to doctor, other doctor. I think Sriram is there. Dr. Sriram is there. Are you there, Dr. Sriram? Yeah, Sriram. Sriram, read the angel. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this appears to be... Uh, I think, Sriram, you are logged on on two devices. Can you switch off one of the devices? This work on one device. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it's better now. Uh, ma'am... There, uh, the, it, there is a retrograde uh, pigtail catheter inside the right, uh, left-sided aortic arch with injection showing the coronaries. There appears to be a constriction uh, above the aortic valvular level. So what is so, it called as? Supravalvular aortic stenosis. Stenosis. Okay. In such a patient, what will be the blood pressure in the right upper limb and the left upper limb? Uh, the right upper limb will have a higher blood pressure as compared to the left upper limb because what of the is it called effect. as because of the quanda effect quanda effect so why why the quanda effect occurs 
the there is selective streaming of blood from the aorta into the right subclavian into the right subclavian as compared to the left subclavian because it is more in line with the aortic arch what are the types of supraaortic stenosis and why they are important um, i don't know can you do the balloon dilatation Um, no. I have to read up about that. We no, do. we don't do the balloon dilatation. See, valvular stenosis we do. Subvalvular membrane we don't. Supraaortic also we don't. So they go for the surgical. So what surgical procedure is there? Uh, Dental repair can be done. Dental. No, too much of noise, you know. It's hurting the ears. Dental, dental procedure. Shira, I think when you are logging in, there is some echoing of your devices. Can you switch your device? Yes, sir. Uh, are it, you it, logged in it, on two it, devices? It. Are you logged in on two devices? No, 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 no. Actually, then I don't know from where so much of noise is coming. Only when you are speaking, the noise is coming. Maybe you can just uh, mute yourself. So it's a supravalvular AS associated with William syndrome. You have to see the elfin faces. It can be hourglass, uh, diffuse constriction. So, ma'am, already discussed that AP window. This is a park classification. Normally, it is called as a Morris classification where proximal distal and mixed whereas a part classification it's a from the surgical point of view close to the aortic wall mid to communication here close to the right pulmonary artery and very big from the proximal to distal like a mixed one so uh, jayarangana sir Professor Jayaranganath can moderate. Hello. We have three panelists Sorry. and one student. Professor Jayaranganath can yeah, moderate. Yeah, yeah. So one of you read the angiogram. The first one. Dr. Umesh is still there, I think. If there is some problem with my video. I am correcting it. It's not. I'm not able to see it. So that is a selective blindness. <laughs> so anybody, other people can take it. Pratik, you can try. No harm if you're wrong. I mean, this is a learning oh, session. See, it is very simple. Go methodically. This is an aerotogram because it's a retrograde uh, aortic annulation on the uh, catheter is in the thoracic aorta. You're seeing the pulmonary circulation, okay. isn't it? On the top of the our so, uh, okay so are they mapped as in the case yeah, of yeah you just want to it is it? very simple isn't it so it is in thoracic aorta very nicely you can see the collaterals that means most of them are all direct collaterals here supplying the pulmonary circulation bilaterally and multiple ones And why we need to see all these things, we'll let you know. What is most important in any of these uh, map cars or imaging of this map cars is that we need to find out whether there's a confluence of the pulmonary arteries. That means whether there's RPA, LPA properly, whether the native pulmonary arteries are confluent or not. Okay, if it is there, the management is slightly different. If it is not there, we need to see what is the age of the child, three months, four months, six months, or one year, two years. So that is, we surgeons would can do some kind of a uh, procedure called a unifocalization. For that, it is necessary to have the complete segmental anatomy of the pulmonary arteries, okay? So nowadays, we don't do regularly angiogram. We do the CT angiogram, but if you have still doubt, if you have to have a hemodynamic data, because here, some of the uh, collaterals are constricted, it's okay. The lungs are protected or not, the distal pulmonary arteries, we need to uh, have the hemodynamic data, we do the catheter, otherwise it may not be necessary in most of the situations. But some surgeons still want to have the conventional angiogram 
before unifocalization okay okay the next one so next one yeah what is the dual supply to the lungs and why is it important to know whether it's a dual supply or not sorry ma'am i didn't get the question properly what is the dual supply uh, why is it important is the... to know whether there is a dual supply or not actually the lung is supplied by two circulations one is from the right heart through the pulmonary artery and the other one is the circulation from the bronchial vessels which are direct branches of the descending thoracic aorta so what is unifocalization uh unifocalization is if if the uh, if one of the pulmonary uh, like di diverting all the supply towards one of the pulmonary arteries uh in case of like if there is uh, selective pulmonary arteries if there is left artery if left sided pulmonary arterial arteries yeah then in that no, case no, no. unifocalization to... is a surgery all the collaterals will be divided Div and connected either side to side or end to side and augmenting the native pulmonary arteries and put a rv to pa count a single stage unifocalization or a stage unifocalization okay absolutely so in a simple language you create the hilar pulmonary arteries by connecting the various segmental arteries okay so it is it's it's a procedure surgical procedure okay so come to the next right side anybody can take it want to take it it's uh, it's a beaded appearance of uh, the descending aorta sir uh, okay the takayasu's arteritis can be a very good so it is it is both aneurysmal type and the stenotic type isn't it yes sir, there are yeah. uh, endosomes and uh, as well as uh, stenosis present yeah what do you think the child will have if you see the cardiac cell out you are not seeing the cardiac cell out properly but whatever you have is a huge cardiac sir, it's cardiac cardiomegaly lb dysfunction yeah maybe there sir okay so what do you suspect in such situations for example any child comes with a cardiomegaly the you know that i am sure the blood pressure is pretty high in the, even yes, in the case of a dcm or a dilated, sir, uh, many times we diagnose the dilated cardiomegaly is you see the pressures if you see around uh, 140 90 in a small child 10 year 11 year old you have to suspect aortic arteritis even if you palpate all the arteries because isolated involvement of the abdominal arteries is fairly common uh, with the aortic arteritis because it's a spectrum it's a syndrome it is not a particular disease okay okay so i will take this so this is a, a shallow yellow cranial anybody would like to see it's a synotic chain it's a case of tetralogy of hello can anybody discuss sir, uh, sir this is uh, uh, the the left left uh, coronaries are arising from the right uh, sinus sir as they are uh, cross the, there is a catheter place in the pa also and uh, uh, it is crossing over the pulmonary artery which coronary artery is this this is the left coronary artery you mean the main main left coronary artery that means the main coronary artery or its branches that the question ma'am is asked because when okay. you say left coronary artery we usually mean left main coronary artery which is supposed to divide into two lad and lcx so do you think it is a left main again if you don't know where the injection is then you are going to have this problem you need to know where the injection has been made in the mam uh, it's aortic root angiogram is, is it aortic taken. root angio do you think it's aortic root angio are you filling all of the whole of aortic root sir right or, right cusp or is it selective coronary the right cusp is being so it is a injection in the sinus yes. in the right coronary sinus if it is the left main where is the circ where should circ be going in this lao view you you are an adult cardiologist am i right yes ma'am then you should know where circ goes in av group in the where AV is group, the av group av group which should be corresponding to the rca on the left side yes so are you seeing that no, no this is just an anomalous lad from the right coronary cusp yes so this is not lmca this is lad right cusp yeah 
ஆல்காபா nowadays we don't do angiogram that's why it is becoming very old angiogram so in alkapa what will happen you can see that during fetal life or early neonatal life we have a pulmonary vascular resistance which is high so even the blood from the pulmonary artery which goes to the left main and then supply even if it is a deoxygenated blood but what will happen as soon as the pvr drops it down there will be amount of steel from the left corner artery to the pa so you have myocardial acute myocardial ischemia will be there whatever coming from the right corner artery even the collateral supply is there it will be emptied into pulmonary artery leading to the significant ischemia however sometimes you have a significant collateral circulation even if they supply to the pulmonary artery emptying into that also it will perfuse the myocardium these patients may have a mild lv dysfunction or, a, or even isolated mitral regurgitation i will just tell these two i will not give you as a quiz so this is a selective right corner artery injection which is given and you can see that sorry you can see that which is filling the left corner artery and you can see the left main this is a congenital left main atresia this is a very rare case of congenital left main atresia now i am going to ask you what is this coronary pattern and what is the structural heart disease associated with this quickly tell we will move on to the next case may i try this is uh, transposition with you all டிஸ்கார்டன்ஸ் inverted corner artery so you can see the right corner artery you can see the left corner artery and you can see the lad here and the circumflex so it is associated what are the structures which go in ctga along with the left ventricle the the mitral valve the, the coronaries and the bundle branches okay very good so ma'am one of you can take me very good answer sorry vigilance nageshwar you have given the answer in the second <laughs> okay uh it's Go not uh there appears to be a fusiform dilatation of the left main and the left anterior descending coronary artery and uh, there appears to be a fistula which is draining into the right atrium right so atrium cor- right atrium or right why do you say right atrium i am not able to see the lower part exactly no 
right when you sorry sir you do get the right atrium there in the delivery projection no no that is a right ventricle 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 okay yeah. okay so the clue is what's the diagnosis clue is kyl coronary cameral fistula coronary cameral fistula fistula what okay. type of fistula can we ask is it uh, end vessel fistula or main branch of fistula or side branch of fistula do you have any knowledge on that no no sir very no, much do you read perloff yes sir according to the perloff textbook what is the embryological hypothesis of coronary fistula draining to the chamber if it is draining into the right atrium right ventricle and pulmonary artery sir i am yet to read about it so not over it okay so you please read what is the thebesian venous system what is the coronary sinusoids what is the supranumerary coronary arteries in case of right atrium thebesian vein communication will be there during embryological period whereas right ventricle you will have coronary sinusoids which is fusion whereas all people will have supranumerary coronary arteries in the beginning that may be communicating you can read perloff so this fistula is being closed here any complication do you anticipate in this patient do you anticipate any complication remember one thing in distal coronary artery fistulas uh, from distal branches distal part so if the artery the artery is very dilated so they may develop thrombus and my thrombus of propagation and myocardial infarction so very careful uh ma'am more and more complex is coming so i will probably freeze the uh right one, left one and then we will do this anita ma'am would you like to coordinate this sure 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 again it will be important to start with the position of the heart the view that will be very very helpful for you so whosoever wants to take prateek or shri ram we've got only two prateek both of them is the video are... playing uh, i can't see the video playing i can see hello hello prateek can you see the video ap view yes okay no actually ma'am it's a ap view i think there is something wrong with your name it's so ap view, view. All right all right shri ram ap view yes ma'am there is a the catheter There is a uh, pic. Is it mitral cardia, dextral cardia, liver cardia? Sir, it is mitral cardia, sir. Okay. AP view and the catheter position. This the catheter is passed retrogradually via the aorta and it has passed through the aorta into the what appears to be the right ventricle or, or a morphologic the ventricle which is on the left side. Which which catheter are you talking about? which which the, ngo the right one which about, is playing right, right now. or left the, the right right one which is playing right now so right one you think catheter is gone from it has passed from the aorta mm -hmm. so what, the... what what about the other both are aorta one on the right side one on the left side no see both the angiograms belong to the same patient same patient okay so you have you are supposed to read the right sided angiogram and there is one angiogram on the left side also okay so if you assume that this is to the arterial thing that's the aorta how does it enter this ventricle the trabeculated right ventricle how does it enter no you, you first consider on the the right sided picture it is a smooth walled ventricle it is a morphological left ventricle isn't it 
that's the systemic yes. plus it uh, ventricle yes yes that is a system venous ventricle because it is receiving venous possibly ventricle. because yes. it is giving rise to the pulmonary artery and all yes. okay for it so so the catheter is from the inferior vena cava and then through the ajagas vein superior vena cava atrium and then to the ventricle which is morphologically left ventricle okay and which is giving pulmonary artery there is a subvalvular stenosis you can see that and there is a large, large ventricular septal defect large ventricular septal defect which is actually partly filling a faintly filling the morphological right ventricle which is coarsely trabeculated and then giving the aorta aorta cctg with is giving to okay now you see the aorta what is the what is the aorta type here is it left arch right arch is it left and anterior what kind of aorta is it the it is left and anterior uh, you cannot tell anterior posterior in ap view but you it's, can see the configuration which is coming and then taking a immediate turn and then coming to the right ventricle so for that you need to have a lateral view but still you can tell it is a left and anterior aorta left and anterior coronary pattern also you probably can see just for the benefit benefit of the students when you are dealing with a corrected transposition you must remember that your interventricular septum has a sagittal line so suppose both the arterial and venous catheters have been shown in the same frame you will see that the catheters turn back on themselves and they don't cross so that is another clue for you okay. even you know if you don't see the angiograms that is a clue that this you could be dealing with a sagittal septum and therefore corrected transposition so for this kind of situation uh, if the patient is symptomatic desaturating significantly we will do operation called as a sennings plus rv to p a condu and the intraventricular tunneling the left ventricle to the aorta you can see that okay this is called as a double switch rostelli operation so this is same patient but post operative and pre operative we don't know why we did i don't remember the logic in that so anybody would like to take you want me to tell or you want to take so i think you can tell this is a little difficult for them so Sir, can you try this is the ap view you can see levocardia the catheter is coming from the inferior vena cava right atrium through the atrial septal communication left atrium through the mitral wall into the left ventricle the catheter is a berman catheter you can see that there is a balloon here with the carbon dioxide and angiogram delivered in the ap view which is very unusual except some cases of tricuspid atresia and ctga we don't do in ap view and what you are seeing is the immediate opacification of the a smooth smoothly trabeculated morphological left ventricle and also there is a filling of hypoplastic right ventricle we can't see vst properly because it's in ap view so this is the hypoplastic right ventricle you don't see the valve movement here suggest it is a tricuspid atresia so the aorta is coming from the left ventricle here whereas right ventricle is giving a pulmonary artery suggest it's a normal related great vessel situation post operatively you can see the lv angiogram that is the right ventricle so it's a case of tricuspid atresia in case of tricuspid atresia no why was the angiogram done agesh sir uh, i i don't remember that's what i told because it's a old angiogram in case of tricuspid atresia systemic venous return and pulmonary venous return theoretically will be mixed in the left atrium so left atrial saturation theoretically should be equal to the 
left ventricle right ventricle pulmonary artery and aorta but it won't happen in all cases because pulmonary veins posteriorly they drain that's why complete admixture taken place in the left ventricle and then you will have distal to that equalization of saturation will be there so in, in spite of that it is a T, dtga if uh, aorta is coming from right ventricle pulmonary artery is coming from left ventricle your saturations are going to be same in case of tricuspid attrition so that's what what you have seen here in the animation model so maybe professor jayaranganath ap and lateral view anybody want to take this yes so may i try so yeah now you can start uh, with uh, this so there is a, a this is a ap view okay, uh, showing the same view. ap and lateral view the, okay, there can... is a Burman catheter which is passed retrogradely via the IVC into the RA and it is uh, retrograde, yeah. present in the... retrograde means what? Why you use it retrogradely? Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is uh, anti-grade. Anti huh? anti 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 from RA to? What did you say? RA to? RA to is passing from the RA into the RV. So why are you saying it to be RV? Because you are seeing only one ventricle. You can't smooth say wall, RV. No? It's a smooth in... wall or the trabeculated? This is a smooth wall. Smooth wall. It is smooth wall. Yeah. So it is likely to be single ventricle of LV morphology. Single ventricle. Thing. Okay. What is happening after that? Uh, both the aorta and the pulmonary are arising from that, from that uh, single ventricle. Mm -hmm. Is what it normal relationship, right? abnormal relationship of great arteries? The aorta appears to be anteriorly and to the right. Very I mean, good. To the right may be difficult, but definitely anterior in the lateral view. In the AP view, they are overlapping. What else? You Is there any pulmonary stenosis? The, there is left-sided pulmonary stenosis. There is no sufficient flow into the left-sided pulmonary vasculature. Why? I thought huh. it was feeling quite well. Yeah, yeah both pulmonary arteries. In fact, good. in fact, there is a plethora. Yes. You can Cardio see the plethora, no? Cardiomegaline, yeah, plethora, correct. no PS. Correct, ma'am. Vigilation. Ma Sri Ram, just yeah. remember that the left pulmonary artery is a little foreshortened in the anterior posterior view. So you may not see it as well as you see the right. Can you see the left pulmonary artery in the lateral view? Do you do you know which in one is left pulmonary artery in the lateral view and which is the right? No, 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 no. See, the anterior one is the iota, the posterior one is the pulmonary artery, so anterior posterior. And that's why in the AP view, they are looking like straight, you know. So you can see the left pulmonary artery, right goes here, iota. So which is the view which, if at all, if I give you one choice to image the left pulmonary artery, which is the view you will take in a congenital heart disease? Example, tetralogy. Cranial. Hello, cranial. Yeah. Cranial. Yeah. So that means to say that in AP, you cannot, most of the times, you cannot comment on the LPA origin, LPA imaging, and all that, unless you have the hello cranial. I mean, hello cranial, you can alter, you know, 30, 40, 30, 20, something like that. But hello cranial is the view. So here, it's a univentricular heart, dilated ventricle, possibly it's a left ventricular morphology, opacifying both the great arteries. We're not very sure how much is the gradient across the pulmonary valve, but aorta still looks bigger than the uh, PA in the previous angiogram. Absolutely correct. So, so it is actually mild to moderate PAH. And mild to moderate pH. If the uh, PA is grossly dilated compared to the aorta, please remember in a single ventricle without a pulmonary a stenosis or obstruction to the pulmonary flow, aorta will be small, PA will be huge. Here, aorta was slightly bigger than the uh, MPA. So there is a possibility some 20-30 gradient may be there. Run that angiogram once again. Freedom. Yeah. If the in a single ventricle, if the great arteries are normally related, what is it called as? Actually, ma'am, I kept that uh, schematic it's, picture for you. It's called. It is called as the home's heart. 
Absolutely. This is the picture, ma'am. What you are talking. Correct. So, single with the normal related great vessels is called as Holmes heart. First described by uh, Da Vinci. So, just for the information of the students who may not be seeing these cases very commonly, usually there is VA discordance. The main chamber or the main left ventricle gives rise to the pulmonary artery, and the hypoplastic RV gives rise to the aorta. When the opposite happens, it is called Holmes heart. That is about 10% of cases of DILP. Absolutely. That's right, Milin. So I will just discuss this case. Uh, you, this is the child with the severe sinosis. Uh, this is the angiogram. It's a dextrocardia. AP view you can see. This is the right ventricle, which is present very superiorly. Then right ventricular angiogram showing there is a pulmonary stenosis, actually hypertrophied muscle bound. And you can see the pulmonary arteries there. And then you can see the pulmonary veins are forming the vertical vein and then coming back. So there is the total anomalous pulmonary venous return, which is supracardiac variety. The Shri other Ma angiogram. Okay. okay, go ahead. The other angiogram you can see, as you rightly telling that a pictorial catheter retrogradely going and then given the injection in the morphological smooth left ventricle you can see the left av wall mitral wall here coronaries are filling subsequently and a normal branching pattern so this is a case of dextrocardia severe pulmonary stenosis with the supracardiac tapvr there is no ventricular septal defect you can see the ventricle septum so what is this condition now you tell me where is the where is the rv and where is the lv Srinivasam, I would like to ask you a question. With this picture, yes, he said it's a dextrocardia and he's showing you the ventricles. Now, is yes, there a situs inversus or situs solitus? Can you make a guess? Um, what is the aortic arch? Aortic arch. Aortic arch is the left aortic arch. Inside Shrira, yes, if there is an isolated dextrocardia, that means situs solitus, only the dextrocardia is there. That's called as isolated dextrocardia. At that time, the okay. RV will be forming the apex, like here. The LV is okay. posterior and RV is forming the apex. But if there is a situs okay. inversus with dextrocardia, it's like a mirror image. So the apex okay. is formed by the LV. Okay, that's a simple clue. Oops. Nageshwar, uh, this uh, this looks like peripheral PS to me. I'm not I'm not seeing the screen also of Dr. Nageshwar. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Nageshwar sir's connection got interrupted. I think so. I think so because his screen is also not visible to me. So, so what is the diagnosis? Uh, yes, now Nageshwar is back. Yeah, there, there is. Nageshwar. Good, good. Welcome back. You are muted. Dr. Nageshwar Rao, please unmute. He is just reconnected. So. Yeah. Yeah, ma'am, I'm sorry for that. Now, now you are all right. Fine. Nageshwar, I thought this was all peripheral PS and not valvular PS. Uh, it is valvular plus peripheral PS. We dilated the valvular PS, but the peripheral PS is there. You are because absolutely... main pulmonary artery is really dilated and pulsatile. It's almost aneurysmally dilated and Correct. pulsatile also. Yeah, pulsatile. And and then there is a stenosis here. Yeah. Correct. So Correct, it may be combination of the valvar and the supravalvar. Absolutely correct, ma'am. Absolutely correct. And this is oh. isolated dextrocardia. Isolated. Probably there is yeah. So now you can see the, this is called as upstairs, downstairs heart. The right ventricle is above, the left ventricle is below. Superior ventricular, superior inferior ventricles or else called as a crisscross Criss -cross. heart. Crisscross. So you can have clockwise rotation, you can have counterclockwise rotation 
and based on that you will have atrial twist will be there or ventricles always will be superior inferior location i don't want to discuss beyond that very nice so maybe whenever you want we can stop ma'am okay anyone ma ma hatik quite interesting anita ma'am was very asking about go ahead anita ma'am was asking left hand you i remember so you can see the left side this is a diffuse multiple pulmonary avms you can see that there is no capillary phase as soon as the arterial phase is there then veins are filling immediately and left atrium is coming so this is a multiple diffuse uh, pulmonary veins which was done long time back uh, that time we were not aware of the abernathy malformation nowadays it is commonly associated with abernathy malformation we understood recently so this is the pulmonary avm you can see the distal left pulmonary artery which is actually communicating that and i will just show them one or two angles this is again pulmonary avm prati if the patient has got cyanosis and the heart is normal structurally what is the thing that you suspect pratik madam is asking you so this pulmonary avm you can see so structurally normal heart clinically normal heart sounds no murmur cyanosis i will show you that picture so mm -hmm. you see the retrograde closure here that means the transeptal approach and being close i just wanted to show to them this is the same variant extreme degree of pulmonary avm called as right pulmonary artery to left pa connection now i will show you uh, maybe a spotter in students it's a for pediatric cardiologist i don't expect uh, you to answer this is the right ventricular angiogram you can see coronary sinusoids it's called as coronary sinusoids when our right ventricular pressures are supra systemic the coronary sinusoids will be communicating with the coronary arteries to generally you will see the aorta filling but it is not clearly seen in this particular shri ram thing. what do you suspect when the sinusoids which are condition through that the coronaries are coming in which condition So, so, so RV is something is atrotic. What is atrotic? So, ma'am, uh, ma'am, can you please repeat the question? I couldn't hear it. See, so that is, is the in the RV chamber, hypoplastic sinusoids are filled, and through the sinusoids, the coronaries are getting filled. So, what is the condition? Which valve is atrotic? Tricuspid valve. Oh. No, you through the RV, the mitral mitral valve. See, you have a small. you have a small shri ram you have a small muscle bound rv here small rv and that rv is giving rise to sinusoid we also call it uh, rv dependent coronary circulation okay i'm giving you a clue no I'm all the clues are given to shri ram already so i will show you i, I think that's a pulmonary atresia ma'am <laughs> we, we can't expect them also so this is a, i i think a last but one angio i will just complete it jay i know you are So okay. this is the thing with the sinus. Okay, Nageshwar Rao, we can't give more clues, you know. In fact, one of our classmates in the first anatomy did not answer anything. Ultimately, they showed the foramen oval. At least uh, he can answer that. He said no. Then he so, said, "I am Dr. Foramen." So he said, "Sir, I am Dr. Venkatesh." And shook hands. So this is the child with uh, clinically no murmurs, normal heart. but whereas echocardiogram shows you can see that bubbles are filling after within three cardiac cycle from the pulmonary veins suggest of a diffuse peripheral pulmonary av fistulas this patient is having a communication between the portal vein sac to the inferior vena cava called as abernathy malformation so you all know that abernathy malformation can produce the hypertension pulmonary hypertension or it can cause pulmonary avms these are the types which all you should read 
i will just give this uh, final after that five cases are there i will not to show this is the last case which i am going to show anybody can academic interest that's all i put it arterial tortuosity syndrome absolutely perfect so this is a arterial tortuosity syndrome you can see the rv angiogram which is showing uh, abnormal diffuse stenosis of pulmonary arteries and aorta levogram which is showing i think we will stop ma'am because the time also is over very interesting very interesting and jos dr nageshwar very interesting brilliant brilliant session brilliant session so last uh, i mean regarding avarnathi uh, nageshwar for the post graduates because they need to yeah. go to the practice and other things so mm-hmm. even as nageshwar said we were also ignorant of this condition till about 6 7 years ago now we have started looking at it uh, the child comes with a multiple av fistula pulmonary av fistula so we are not look, really looking at it now we know that they can be associated with the abernathy malformation as it rightly is a porto uh, system Yeah, that's a good comment, uh, Jay. Pulmonary arterial hypertension okay. and multiple AV fistula. We need to work up for this abernathy. Please keep it in mind, though, so that uh, mo- some of the cases can be uh, really we can do a good job in treating their uh, basic condition. And Thank such you, patients, you know, they will not be fit for uh, getting the liver transplant. Yeah. They will be disqualified. no oh, you are not that every abernathy can be treated madam at least some at least some percentage can be treated what we need to see is the radicals over the radicals if the circulation is there absolutely Otherwise, even a lot of even abernathies can land up with uh, uh, really a bad situation but some okay. can be treated yeah this whole depends on the pulmonary, pulmonary hypertension how much is yeah. the pulmonary hypertension yeah. so in the, in india i think the whole credit should go to dr nagesh rao because he is the one who started this awareness about abernathy some 7 8 years back so no all most of our uh, cardiology community pediatric cardiology community he is uh, i i don't think anybody uh, any of us are missing this particular condition uh, i think we have written a paper along with uh, about five to six centers yeah uh, isn't it that's already it, yeah it's uh, being accepted we yeah. the multi centric uh, this one four five centers we have written that uh, good article he is the main author for that so a good case uh, reports yeah great great okay thank you very much i'm uh, before i'm in the end i would ask uh, request all the distinguished panelists to please give their uh, summary and uh, summing up remarks maybe we can start with dr anita saxena ma'am and thank you melin i think couple of points that uh, the students must remember one is to go very very systematically as i said do not rush to describe the injury or make a diagnosis it is better to go systematically starting with the cardiac sill hout which view whether the heart is enlarged whether there is increased pulmonary vascularity it's kind of an x ray that you can see in the angio to begin with before the dye is injected so and very very important to know which view are we talking about is it ap lateral cranial caudal lao rao like that you may not exactly know how many degrees Uh, you know lao and how many how much cranial but at least try to make it shallow cranial steep cranial lateral kp ap view cranial caudal like that so that's number one then as i said earlier also please look at the catheter very very important in congenital heart you will have to see whether your catheter is on the right of the spine or left of the spine because you may have situs inversus you may have situs ambiguous in fact both venous and arterial catheters may be going on one side of the spine so see the catheter <laughs> position see whether it is going into the heart or it is going up first and then coming down because many a times you are shown angios where there is a zygous continuation ivc interruption i think examiners are quite fond of showing such angios to the students so please do look at the the course of the catheter and many a times you may be given two views so you can actually see in the other view also whether the catheter is going posteriorly or anteriorly identify the catheter whether it is a pictorial catheter nih catheter burman catheter of course if the burman balloon is not inflated you will not be able to make out whether it is burman or an nih but multi purpose catheter is hardly ever used for injection and that is what you need to remember as was pointed out by dr vijay lakshmi right in the beginning once you have identified the catheter then see where which chamber it is likely to be located and where the dye has been injected and then the, the next is to follow the dye you must follow the dye in your description also if it is injection into the ventricle start with the ventricular size ventricular function 
whether the ventricle is in the right place or it is abnormally placed, is it trabeculated, smooth, only then go and follow the dye into the great artery, whether it is going into the pulmonary artery or it is going into the aorta. Then, of course, if there is a communication anywhere between the two ventricles or between the two great arteries, that also you have to say, see. And if you see something like pulmonary atresia, where you don't fill the pulmonary arteries, then you look for collaterals. So, as I said, follow the dye, see which chamber or which great artery it is going into, and then if you keep doing that, you will be able to come to a diagnosis rather than jumping onto a you know, diagnosis right in the beginning, which you may be wrong. So in congenital heart, you need to be very, very systematic in describing everything because everything can be haywire. Your catheter may not be in the right position. The ventricles may not be in the right position. Great arteries are also malposed often. So you really have to look at each and every aspect very, very carefully. And that's all I would like to say. And of course, congratulations to Dr. Nageshwar for showing such interesting cases uh, to the students. Thank you, Milan. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi, ma'am. Yeah, first of all, I would like to congratulate Dr. Nageshwar Rao for beautifully showing very systematically right from the SVC to the complex uh, uh, anomalies. And uh, as Dr. Anita Saxena has rightly put it, you know, very systematically to be studied. So one thing I would like to add is um, what the eyes, uh, what the mind doesn't know, the eyes will not see. So first of all, understand the anatomy, physiology, pathology, and then go to the angiograms. Otherwise, you'll be totally missing the whole thing. And remember one thing, the congenital heart disease, they go in group, like how the birds flock together, you know, in the same way, they go in a group and just don't be happy with identifying one abnormality. Dr. Nageshwar Rao showed how the combination of TAPVC with the thing, so like that, you know, you can have multiple uh, defects in a, a same patient. So uh, look for the other uh, anomalies also. Otherwise, if, uh, your uh, angiogram is like a roadmap to the surgeon. And if you don't give a complete uh, anatomy, uh, the surgeon will be uh, into the uh, in soup. So all the best for all of you. And I think the postgraduate should participate. This is the place where you can lose your... Uh, fear and then talk to us and then learn, you know. And that is the whole idea why Melinda has arranged for these things. So more the participation, more questions, the more you commit now Absolutely. mistakes, you can do better in the examination. So that is the idea. So all the best. Absolutely. Good luck. Shubhratri. Thank you, ma'am. And Dr. Jairanganath, sir, please, your summing up comments. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Melinda. Uh, see, this is all uh, what we have discussed today is mainly for the passing the examination, reading the thing. But what we need to the postgraduate should do is that please do uh, spend some time in the cat lab. Of course, even when you are doing the adult uh, coronary angiography or catheterization, please learn the right art catheterization. Don't lose the touch because you throughout your life, you will have to one way or the other. You have to get in all the right art catheterization. Number one, you have to have enough knowledge of the catheters, what we use, the safety concerns. Please do not continue to do the right heart catheterization right from the training days, number one. Number two, performing the angiograms. Though it is very, very less, of course, because of the advent of the high-end echocardiograms or the other imaging, the CT, MRI, so many things, but we still need the angiogram. It cannot, we cannot do without uh, the angiogram even for therapeutic indications. For example, when you want to close the pulmonary airway fistula, you should have the different planes. You should have the proper understanding of the where that fistula is. That You have to take multiple views. There is no one customized view for a particular view for each and every case. For example, in a VSD closure, there is nothing like a 45 degree, 25 degree. No, you have to customize many times. So spend some time and understand anything. And third one, what I want to do, in, especially in a cyanotic heart disease, I think we should have a game plan before submitting any child or anybody for angiography. What we need to learn is a game plan. For example, if you are asked to do a catheterization in a child with a pulmonary atresia, yeah, you don't have to do the LV angiogram. You have to, don't have to do the RV angiogram. You don't have to do anything. What is interested? You are interested only in the delineation of the pulmonary arteries. Go straight away to that. So, of course, before that, we have to have a proper clinical data, ECG, X-ray, everything you have to pull up the old data and spend time because catheterization and angiography is an invasive procedure. We are doing something to the child, anesthesia, puncturing, contrast, their hydration status, everything. So be very specific what you need. That means a target-oriented catheterization and angiogram is a must. Okay? So these are my, I think, some of the points which I would like to give you. Thank you very much, Dr. Milinda, and thank you, 
everybody for giving me the opportunity to be on the part of this uh, uh, wonderful program. Thank you, Dr. Nageshwara, for wonderful uh, uh, pictures. Thank you. Thank you. Very kind of you, sir. And just to take forward what you said, ki, uh, be very target specific. We were told during our post-graduation that when you are uh, doing a cardiac catheterization for a sick child, think that every angiogram that you're doing is your last angiogram in this child. So extract the maximum information out of the first angiograms. Don't See, one of my teachers used to tell me, to Dr. Milin, one of the one of my yes. teachers used to tell me, you know, the most important complication of a diagnostic angiogram is a non-diagnostic angiogram. Absolutely. Do the <laughs> Absolutely. Madam, you know who is to tell me this? Dr. Subhash Chandra. Oh, yeah. yeah. He had a yeah. sense of humor, though a serious man. <laughs> so, so that is why. So we have to have the complete thing because we cannot subject the child for a second time. It's inhuman, isn't it? Okay, Dr. Yeah. Mili. I think we'll wind thank up. You. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, again, uh, Dr. Nageshwar Rao, sir, we are very grateful and it has been a wonderful session. You have brought out all the possible angiograms uh, in congenital heart disease which the students can get and some of the most complex ones which we also have seen very rarely. And I'm very grateful and to all the panelists as well. Wonderful session and I just hand it over to the agenda team for their last remarks. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dr. Milin Fadke, sir. So very good evening to all the respected doctors on behalf of Ajanta Pharma. I am Sunny Jaiswal, marketing head. Would like to take this opportunity to put formal word of thanks on record for making this today's sixth Cardio Master workshop a grand success. Doctors would like to thanks to our today's speaker, Dr. Nageshwar Rao, sir, for his insightful presentation. I would say rather insightful spotters on angiograms. Special thanks to our today's uh, course director, Dr. Milin Fadke, sir, and uh, Dr. Ajay Mahajan, sir, who is celebrating his birthday today for all their guidance. Beside that, would like to acknowledge the contribution of today's expert panelist, who is none other than Dr. Professor Anita Saxena, madam, uh, Dr. I.B. Vijayalakshmi, madam, and Dr. J. Ranganathan, sir. Also, thanks to all the DM and DNB participants for interest time in learning from the Star Wars of Cardiology. We also encourage all the participants for their active participation in all the future workshops too. So with this, we conclude our today's sixth Cardio Master Workshop. Thanks to one and all. Good night and a happy weekend ahead to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Holi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very happy Holi. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. Thank you. Good night.